Hello, this is Mark Taylor. I wanted to wish you a happy new year for 2018. Um, I know we're currently in our music and the art season of season four, but I wanted to start the new year with um, a positive message, really. Um, I interviewed Lisa Avery, who's part of the UK arm now of Growing With Gratitude. I just think it's really important that before we start teaching our children anything about any particular subject, all the tools they need in order to survive and, and to become part of the workforce, it's a really important thing for them to know how to be the best human they can be and to find their talents and to find what it's like to be their best person. Um, and you'll remember back in January 2017, I interviewed Ash Manuel, who set up Grown With Gratitude in Australia. And Lisa's now in charge of the UK arm of this. And um, and so I wanted to give you the opportunity to, to really see what they're doing, how it's growing and, and what's involved so that in very simple steps, you can get gratitude and mindfulness and general well-being embedded in your school, which is just such an important part for the the, the survival and, and and learning of every single child so um this is how we're going to start our 2018 with a really positive look at how we can really make well-being and support our children to be the best they possibly can hello and welcome to the education on fire podcast the place where we share creative and inspiring learning in our schools Season 4, Episode 55. Hello and welcome back to the Education on Fire podcast with me, Mark Taylor. Um, Today I'm joined by Lisa Avery, who is the UK Operations Manager of Growing With Gratitude. Um, And you'll remember back in Episode 7, which was all the way back in January of this year, um, I chatted to Ash Manuel. He's the the founder and, and the creator of Growing With Gratitude. And I was so excited to hear that actually they're now expanding and, and having someone that's dedicated to, to do everything within the UK. So welcome, Lisa. And um, I'm really pleased you're able to be on with us. Oh, thank you, Mark. It's such a pleasure to be here. And thank you for asking. Uh, thank you. Absolutely brilliant. Um, so can you just start off, give us a little bit of background about, about yourself and also how you became involved with Growing With Gratitude? Sure, absolutely. And so my background really is in education. I started out in languages and language teaching. So I've lived in France and then later in Spain. And I've been here in Spain for like the last 13 years now, where I've been working in a range of primary schools, secondary schools. Um, And later I got involved with a lot of different companies, local and multinational. And that really takes me to where I am now in the sense that one of the institutions I was involved with was the school of psychologists here in Barcelona and I got involved with the organization of the International Congress of Coaching Psychology and I mean I'd always had a real interest in psychology it was something that I'd been fascinated by and I'd always read a lot about but at that moment I I really did get extremely excited and and, and passionate and enthusiastic when when I learned just wow what the what a transformative power it could have on people's lives and so through that involvement I looked into to getting some training in psychology, which was where I came across um, the University of East London, and they were offering a three-year master's degree in applied positive psychology and coaching psychology. And it was one of those moments, Mark, where it just seemed like everything came together. You know, this is who I am, this is what I'm about, and this is what I feel hugely, hugely passionate about. And since then, I, I, I really haven't looked back. So that was sort of three years ago. And then in the last year, I started to speak to Ashley. He sort of found me via LinkedIn and we, we got this dialogue going and, and I was so excited by his project, you know, the, the idea of building and protecting kids' mental health um, that, that it was something that I instantly got involved with. And yeah, and it's and so so we're just launching now in the UK. Ashley's been going for, for a good three years over in Australia and we're, we're looking to really expand to internationally to the rest of the world. Uh, that's really great to hear and and so can you just give us a bit of background into what growing with gratitude is because I mean those that haven't heard uh, my interview with Ash back on episode seven just just to give them a little bit of a taster of of what it actually involves 
Sure, sure. So Growing With Gratitude is a positive psychology program that we take to primary schools, primary schools uh, from the age of like five to 11. And what we focus on in Growing With Gratitude is cultivating a sense of gratitude, empathy, kindness, the growth mindset, resilience, all the psychological and emotional skills that children really need to, to, to thrive, you know, to flourish, to be at their physical, psychological and emotional best. And the way in which we do this is is through this in-school program. And the program consists of, for each year group, we have uh, 10 one hour long classes. And then from the classes, we have some, what we call the habits of happiness wheel. And so once the children have actually learned the theory behind the happiness, um, we, we have a weekly, well, the weekly opportunity to practice via short habits. So, so for example, we'll have like a five minute activity that's two or three times a week. Because the idea is learning the theory is perfect. That's, that's really great. But all of this, the, these are habits which have to be implemented on a regular basis to get the maximum maximum psychological and emotional benefit. So, so yes, so it's a ten a ten hour long program for each year group, but with habits to to be practiced on a regular basis. And teachers can choose to either do that in ten consecutive weeks, or else to space it out over the academic year. So it's up to them. Uh, I see. And so, is it the teachers that are actually going to deliver this, or or because yes. I've 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 seen Ash going into schools in in Aus- in Australia, and I wasn't quite sure whether that's complementing what's already going on and getting the whole sure. project going, or, or or whether it's an integral part of what's offered. Sure. Sure. Well, actually, what Ash is, is really doing is sort of like raising awareness as to what we're doing. So for that reason, he is going in, he is conducting the workshops to teachers, to students. And that is something that we're willing to offer in the UK and we'd be excited to do in the UK too. But in actual fact, our program is online and it's fully resourced. And that means that it's very easy for teachers, even teachers who don't have any training whatsoever in positive psychology, because everything is actually there on on online in our program and so teachers can very easily you know read about the theory behind that because we have all the information there you know and it's we, we have all the instruct it's very easy and simple and straightforward you know so much of what we're, we're doing here it's it's very straightforward and it seems very logical yet it's something that doesn't exist it's so simple yet once implemented has very profound effects. So the teachers themselves, yeah, Mark, without any training in this can can very easily begin to implement this and see real results, you know, and real differences because of this in the students, you know, and in the interaction between students and teachers. And that, of course, extends to the whole school environment. So it, it's very simple. It's very easy to implement. Yet yeah, it's something which has a, a real profound impact. That's what we found in Australia anyway. Yeah, so. and, and I, I think that's the key is the fact that one, it's the the regularity of everything and and it being in their awareness and that there's there's lots of talk here in the UK especially about well-being and and all of that kind of thing but it's no, it's knowing what that is you know take the buzzword away and it's you know what does that actually look like how can you actually implement that and I think that's what this program really helps with doesn't it it really gets yep. you to understand what it is and the actual actionable tips that and exercises Absolutely. that you can do Absolutely, absolutely, Mark. You're totally right. It's defining what it means, you know, to be a well-rounded, balanced person. And I think, you, you know, there's a real discrepancy when you speak to teachers and parents and you ask them what they'd want for their children in the future, you know, they say happiness, well-being, health. And then you ask, well, what are we actually teaching in schools? Well, we're teaching achievement, we're teaching conformity. And it's trying really to bridge that discrepancy between that which we're actually doing and that which we actually, you know, want for our for the future generation. And I think that's what it's about, too. It's creating this dialogue. It's giving children the language to express their emotions, to express their needs. And and I think, you know, the younger we, we begin, the, you know, the younger age groups we begin doing this, the, the more likely it is that we're going to prevent mental health problems. I, I don't know if your listeners are aware, but uh, one in 10 children has a diagnosable mental illness in, in the UK. And in theory, half of these conditions can actually begin before before the age of 14. So the fact that the government now, they're, they're, they're implementing a system in which they're going to train, I think it is 3,000 
members of staff in secondary schools within the next three years to to be aware of mental illnesses and these things. Well, for us, it's just a bit too late, you know. If half of mental illnesses begin before the age of 14, shouldn't we be trying to intervene before that age? And, and that is in part what we're about, you know. We're trying to take proactive steps and measures so as to cultivate maximum well-being, um, you know, so as to prevent these kind of future incidents in people. And I think I think it's that understanding which is is the most important thing because what we what we yeah. do know is that um, if you see a child around, if you go into a school playground, the sort of the people in reception and nursery um, and sort of year one, they're running around without a care in the world. It's all about play. A lot, a lot, even a lot of their lessons to begin with are sort of play based, um, and they're, and they're thriving. And it's you can just see. It's, you can just see it diminishing as they go up through the school year and, and and then you have your kind of you know wow days which kind of were meant to be inspiring but I just think a lot of just the, re- the repetition of all the constant academic stuff and the yeah. stress and all of that is just chipping yeah. away at what yeah. they naturally have and a lot of it is about just what, what, what I like about this program is it seems to reinforce what the children will already know they don't need to learn yes. about being kind and empathizing no. with people because it's what they have it's just letting yeah. them know that that's what they know already they need to keep doing and I yeah. think looking at yeah. it that way is a much more positive attitude yeah I, absolutely Mark I couldn't agree more I think this is something very innate but unfortunately we tend to have this stripped away from us at a young age with too much focus on achievement you know and and I mean Martin Seligman the, the sort of godfather of positive psychology he has this formula for, for well-being which is the acronym PERMA which stands for positive emotions engagement relationships meaning and finally achievement and I think our school system focuses so much on achievement but to the detriment, you know, of, of the other elements of well-being, which are equally important. And those, you know, are things that we really try to focus on and, and highlight just so that everything's in balance. You know, it's not about putting more weight on happiness. It's simply it's about trying to create a well-rounded human being who's going to thrive in every aspect of life, achievement being one of them. You know, and contrary to what people used to say, you know, teaching happiness and well-being is not detrimental to achievement. Quite the contrary, you know, happier students do better in schools and that's been proved time and time and time again and the great thing about happiness and resilience and all the things that we try to implement they are very much teachable habits and, and habits which which can be built upon over time and, and I think as well Mark you brought something very interesting up there talking about the repetition in schools what we strive for here with growing gratitude it's to create a sense of variety around this kind of teaching because there's something in positive psychology called hedonic adaptation I don't know whether you and your listeners will have heard of it. But the the idea being, you know, that we get used to everything very quickly, be it something positive or something negative. So the fact is we need constant variety so as not to get used to and just take things for take things for granted. And habits like happiness, if you use them too much, you know, these exercises, they can become, you know, meaningless really and not really work so well. So we strive for variety. And, and I think that's sort of reflected in our program. We keep it very varied, you know, very exciting. And, and, and that's great great for everyone involved brilliant and, and can you just give us sort of an example of what some of these um, exercises and, and programs would actually look like if, if you were going to be having it in your school Sure. So, I mean, we we have a a lot of different exercises sort of centered around gratitude, empathy, kindness. Um, For example, one activity may be where children have a a blank post-it note and they stick it to their back and they have to walk around uh, the classroom and other children will write nice things about them on their back. So a compliment, for example. And and so this is all in secret. So, you know, it creates a bit of an atmosphere going around the classroom. And so then later, uh, you know, at the in sort of 10 minutes later, 20 minutes later, that we'll have children sit down in small groups and take off the post-it from their back and hand their post-it to another child so that then they'll start to share the compliments in small groups. And what's nice about this is we don't just stop there. So it's not a case of just the child hearing nice things about themselves. We talk about, you know, what it feels like to hear a compliment, what it feels like to give a compliment, what it does to the relationship between those people who are 
giving and receiving compliments, you know. So we're talking about kindness. We're talking about empathy. We're talking about this emotional understanding. And, and we're talking about the social glue that this really sort of creates, how, how these this kind of interaction bonds people together. So, you know, this is something that's good for the self-esteem of the individual, but also, you know, it's creating that those relationships. And I mean, you know, positive relationships have been found to, to be a key to well-being. And I think oftentimes in school, you know, we have a problem with bullying. You, you know, we have a, a bad atmosphere in the classroom. So, I mean, it, it's not just about the individual, but it's about how the individual interacts with the rest of the students. And kindness, I think it, it's one of our pillars. And it's something, you know, that we that we would focus on here. So, so that, you know, that could be an example with kindness. Then we, for example, we might go on a mindfulness walk whereby you know the kids are they're taken out of the school with teachers with helpers and they're they're going on a walk and they're going to be taking in you know the sights the the sounds the smells they're going to you know be walking in silence and they're going to be really appreciative and really aware of what's going on and then they're going to come back into the classroom and we're going to talk about that and we're going to dissect that and and what we're really doing here we're, we're becoming aware of our own thoughts our own feelings and most importantly we're becoming aware of uh, of the power that we have at any given moment to take a few seconds seconds between our thought and how we interpret our thought because between that those thoughts and those reactions you know there lie a few sort of critical seconds in which we can choose how we respond to that stimulus so I mean we, we, we go about this in all kinds of different ways really there are plenty more um, examples but basically it, it's these habits of gratitude empathy kindness growth mindset resilience that really start to strengthen you know to, as I said before to build and, and protect the, the kids mental health and what I like about that is the fact that yeah. like you say it's not taking up we need to spend a whole day and then forget about no. it it's it's oh. it's doing it regularly the, the, yes. the, th the thing that just struck me there is um it doesn't happen so much in my daughter's school anymore because they've got a minibus but they used to have to walk from the school up to the secondary school to have their swimming yeah. lessons oh. um and 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 I just thought actually it's those those sorts of times which actually they yeah. all felt a little bit of a burden yes. because they have to do it but <laughs> but if you're in that mindset if you've already yeah. had that conversation about you know what do yeah. you notice on the way up yeah. what do you see what do you yeah. smell what all those yeah. kind of things it just brings all of that time which is already accountable for in the yes. school because we know schools are you know really struggling for time and having to yeah. um, accommodate everything but it, yeah. it's including just a way of being within what you're already doing and that, that's probably the Absolutely. most important takeaway from that point of view Absolutely, Mark. I couldn't agree more. I mean, this is something that, that very much is very easy to implement into an already sort of busy, you know, overscheduled school timetable. I, and I think that the, the fact is that, you know, the ability to be mindful, the ability to, to embody these qualities that we're trying to instill into young people, it, it really adds so much value to the times in which, you know, kids are sitting down, they're focused, they're concentrated. You know, a, a lot of schools now, I think, are starting to use meditation as a way to really calm and help focus students and the power of it in study after study it's absolutely undeniable and, and I think it's very hard to ignore that so I think for a little time that may seem you know a little bit overstretched and already hectic timetable a little time taken out of that wow I, I think the, the, it's, it's a real a really powerful investment you know for, for students concentration for students well-being and just for the general sort of happiness of the whole class and whole school environment yeah I, I, I absolutely think it's a very small investment for, for a real you know a real reward the reward that you can reap indeed and and for those people who did listen to the interview I did with Ash can you take us a little bit through the journey that's happened sort of since January because I know when I spoke to him they were having some research done from an, an, a university in Australia and I know they've also been sure. given some some money and, and grants sure. um, within various sporting organizations as well so it sounds like sure. it's really getting some momentum in, over there. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's taking off nicely over there. I mean, they've actually been awarded 450,000 Australian dollars from the South Australian government, which is, is allowing us, you know, to do all this work in schools to, to raise awareness for what we're about. Um, the, the study from the University of South Australia, it's, it's not quite complete yet, but the, the initial findings, they're very, very, very positive. So uh, whilst I can't divulge too much of that information until it actually 
actually formally comes out. What I can say is that on a qualitative level, you know, reports from students themselves, from teachers, from parents have been extremely positive in terms of well-being of, of the youngsters. So, I mean, that that's all very exciting. And that is giving us the momentum, you know, to try to take this to the rest of the world. The, U, the UK sort of been first in line there. And the fact that we're, we're actually online, the fact that we're online, the fact that we're able to, to be accessed very easily means that we're actually present, Ash told me, in 44 different countries already. So 44 different countries are already accessing our program because we have some free resources there. Um, and, and and so that's great. You know, that's 44 countries where we're, we're actually being found. So that, That's great because, I mean, um, Education on Fire is listened to in over 50 countries around the world. Wow. Now, which, <laughs> which is incredible. So it's really it's really great to know that you know what we often talk about the UK and some of these things in uh, I'm also really keen to make sure that anything which can be accessed around the world which is relevant to anybody that's you know when we're just talking about what's the most important thing for our children rather than just part of the curriculum and that sort of thing it really does help them in in order to be able to do that so that's a really great thing to know that you no matter where you're listening you can actually get access to these things so where should they go to try and find some of these resources where's the best sort of website to to, to get that and so you you can find our website at www.growingwithgratitude.com dot com dot au for Australia. If you if you go to this website, we actually have the UK page too, but it's it's easier to go for it to growingwithgratitude.com.au. Um, and from that website, you, you can sign up for some free resources. Um, if you're a school and you're interested in, in having a free trial, then we, we happily give a free trial for a two week period. And, and we're very excited to do that. And, uh, and of course, just to contact either Ash or I for any more information, because uh, there's so much more to say yet at the same time you know it, it's all very simple and straightforward to implement into into the school and I think you know the results are, are profound so uh, so yeah that's, that's really it's really good to hear and why why do you think the Australian government um would um to give that amount of money to it because it seems like I mean I know in global terms it's a small amount of money but it's a substantial amount of money in terms of being able to grow an organization like growing with gratitude and it's sure. it feels like it's a real supportive thing from the people that have the power and influence to really help yes. children so yeah I'm, I, I'm yeah. really keen to sort of understand a little bit about that because if that could happen over here for example then yeah it really could have a massive impact Sure. I think it's a really interesting question. That's exactly the question we need to be asking ourselves in the UK. For me, it's why not? You know, when when mental health and physical health, they, they really do go hand in hand. And this has been proven. You, you, you know, with the problems we have with the NHS, the, the burden on the NHS and these things. I feel like how on earth could the government not yet have given this kind of money to to a similar project? Because over in Australia, they they are a little bit ahead of us with that. And they do seem to have recognized the importance of mental health. They've had various trials. I think Geelong Grammar School, a private school, was the first school to to trial something similar to Growing With Gratitude. And I mean, the results have just been absolutely astounding with children academically doing better, being happier, having a better physical health health too you know the, the question for me the, the Australian government are further ahead than, than we are in the UK but hopefully you know we're not too far behind them I, I think we're only really just starting to, to to catch up but hopefully you know this is really going to take some takes you know get some momentum very quickly great and and, and why, why was it the UK that sort of is the, the, the next uh, country on your agenda why, why was it the UK rather than anywhere else Sure. Well, well, of course, I guess the very easy fact that I am originally from the UK, whilst yeah. I'm based over here in Barcelona, I, I'm now starting to come over to the UK a little bit more with this project. And and also because, because for, for the very reason that quite recently the government did announce that they would be having this spending, this £300,000, uh, I think it is, um, in but specifically in secondary schools. So whilst they haven't yet talked about funding so much for primary schools, I believe that before the end of this government, they, they do want to look at primary schools too, but the first tackle in secondary schools. But once again, in spite of the fact that they haven't yet announced any spending in primary schools, we so strongly, strongly feel that children from a very young age could be adopting the skills that could later prevent you know, mental health disasters and crises, as we're presently seeing in the UK. So whilst we don't yet have that funding, we feel so strongly about it that we're just going to put ourselves out there 
say, you know, see what kind of schools are interested, see, see who wants to give it a go for free. And, and hopefully, you know, once a few schools start to see the real benefits, others might follow suit. And, and we may even, you know, get to persuade somebody uh, within the government. Who's, who's, who knows? <laughs> that would be great, wouldn't it? Really would be great. Yeah. Um, yeah. So in terms of of exactly what's involved so that they, they go to the website um they then follow a program they download worksheets uh, exactly what, what are the sure. practical steps that teachers sure. would need to take so any practice so, so i guess the first thing would be to see if this is something that you know is going to be of interest and relevance to your school uh, and i think it would be the case for all schools but i i guess first of all it's you know getting a head teacher or a deputy or any member of staff who you know has has i don't know 20 minutes of free time to have a look at our program we were very happy to uh, to let someone into the system you know for for a little time see if this is something that's interesting for them if they do feel this is something they'd like to explore further then either Ash or I are happy to have a chat about it and from there we can set up um, a free trial so a free two-week trial all they would need literally is is one laptop one computer because whilst we say we're an online program it doesn't mean that every child needs a computer far from it so from from our online program the teacher would have access to the 10 lesson plans per year group and to the habits of happiness wheel which is basically just a wheel that the children spin you know two or three times a week where they get to practice for like five minutes one of the habits of happiness that they've learned about in the previous class so so from that online program the teacher has the all the downloadable resources you know which are just they can make photocopies of they don't need anything in particular no special material and it's just that mark they'll have the 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 10 hour lesson plan and well sorry the 10 one hour lesson plans and uh and that's all they need that with the habits of happiness wheel you know there are like other additional materials that that, that they can add to that but that's all pretty uh optional um and that is all they need that's all they need to do obviously for a two-week period they wouldn't have time to try all of those but they would have you know enough time to get an idea to get a feel for for what it's about and the kind of impact that it can have on the students Um, yeah i mean that that sounds really excellent and and it's the sort of thing that if you're listening as a teacher and you just want to give it a go and, and if it makes yeah. some kind of impact some kind of opportunity to be able to then take it to your head like you said or your yes. deputy and just say yeah. look we've yeah. we've tried this it's not cost us any money yet this is how it can yeah. work these are the kind yeah. of things that we're already beginning to see then you've yeah. already got that opportunity to sell it and, and if you've got that enthusiasm and that real kind of knowing you know, we all know this is what children need you know we we, yeah. we know this is just a fundamental part of of what they're understanding needs to be about them as a whole person you know yes. that's what we're yeah. educating you know and all the yeah. academic stuff are tools that they can then do to fulfill their potential so um, getting on board in that way it just is probably the most important thing you can possibly do and and, yeah. and, and go to yeah. that website and, uh, and really check it out absolutely mark and i mean i'd just like to add like however small we start it's you know that in itself is significant even if it's just one year group a couple of year groups the school has to know that great if they choose to take on the program for the whole school but if they just want to give it a trial you know for one year with one year group to see how it goes or a couple of year groups then that's absolutely fine too you know and and each year group we we obviously have a different syllabus for each year group so you you know this is something that's very cumulative in its effects so if kids can start like at the age of five and, 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 and learn this, you know, from the age of five to 11, wow, that's powerful. But even so, it's never too late. It's absolutely never too late. And I think even the teachers themselves, you know, we've had feedback that the teachers themselves have experienced, you know, some pretty transformative lessons there and, 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 and more, you know, emotional awareness and a, a greater well-being and resilience in a, a profession which is as stressful and demanding as teaching can be at times. So I think, you know, this this is something very beneficial both for students then parents and families and teachers and, and and the whole school environment i have to say you know habit uh, happiness is something that really is contagious well-being is something that's very contagious and it's sort of you know it, it affects everybody that we come into contact with so i i, I cannot tell you how much we, we really do believe in the transformative power of this and and definitely i think you know for the sake of a couple of weeks giving it a go in your class for free of charge i i don't think there's too much to lose and I, and I think there's a lot to gain so I would really urge teachers if you're interested please do get in touch because we'd be more than happy to give you any more information that's really that's really brilliant and 
the thing that just struck me then was that we I had this conversation on on, a, on a, an episode quite recently was the fact that the dialogue you have with your children in your class and also yeah. probably more importantly understanding their story um yes. and, and it's these kind of conversations it's talking about these kind of things in life that bring that out and that's so beneficial in everything that you then learn in school as well isn't it so so it's, it's really given you a real starting point for those things as well rather than having to create a full situation you're actually embedding it in exactly what your school classroom actually will look like Absolutely. I think, yeah, it's, it's a brilliant point, Mark. And I, I just think this this initiative, it's so preventative, really. We're taking measures from a very young, a very early age, so as to give children, you know, the emotional literacy that they that life just doesn't necessarily teach them. You know, it's taken me you know, 36 years to be able to put my feelings into words, to be able to express how I'm feeling at any moment, you know. And that is real power, you know, the ability to put your feelings into words, to create a language language around your emotions, that really takes away the power of negative emotions when when we do experience them, when we do feel them. You know, the kind of negative emotions that kids may be experienced that leads them to play up in class, to behave badly, you know, then to be thrown out of the class when at that moment the child is manifesting a need to be understood, to be closer to other students, to be closer to the teacher. And what do teachers sometimes do? You know, they sometimes, you know, throw them out of the class. So they're actually excluded at a time when they most need to be understood and I think the great thing about this program is it's building awareness it's building emotional awareness you know both for the individual for, for the students and the teachers it's creating a very open and honest dialogue in a place where nothing's been said up to this point I think I think that's that's that, that's a great place to finish because it really does give us an understanding of the power actually about it rather than it, you know we talk about programs and resources but it's actually the fundamental power about what we're doing and that's that's so brilliantly so thanks so much for chatting to me can you just give us give us the website once one more time just for those people and um yeah absolutely and so the website is www.growing with gratitude all one word growing with gratitude.com dot au for australia au and as i say the uk version can be accessed from there very easily fantastic um so thanks very very much for chatting it's it's been really great and i'm really pleased that the whole thing is growing and especially becoming oh. international as well it's such an important thing and and for those of you um listening please just share this podcast with with some teachers in your school and and, and some schools around just so that um we can we can sort of help spread the, the, this feeling of positivity and also feel that we're actually been able to make a difference to every person every day in that smallest kind of way and I think from there I think the rest of education and society will start to take care of itself it's just knowing yeah. these things to begin with. <laughs> well thank you so much Mark for the opportunity to talk about this it's been great. Thanks for listening to the Education on Fire podcast. For more information of each episode and to get in touch go to educationonfire.com Education is not the filling of a pail, but the lighting of a fire.